in this fifth and final item on the spring 2014 exam number one we have a axially loaded system that is statically indeterminate we've got an aluminum rod here connected at a a steel rod connected at d with an applied force of 10 kips at point c i've already drawn the free by diagram of the rigid bar a b c d over here to the left along with the associated deformations We'll note that with this downwards applied 10 kip load, it'll cause this rigid bar to want to rotate in a clockwise fashion, squeezing the aluminum rod, which means it pushes back on bar ABCD. As well, it also squeezes the steel rod. It's pushing back on the rod as well. And then, of course, we have the two reactions at, at B, BY, and BX. Right? And as typical here, our first step is to write an equilibrium equation and the one that we usually are going to write is going to be the one that gets rid of these two reactions B X and B Y because we don't really need those some moments about point B let's use counterclockwise as positive and we have 30 times an A minus 24 times our 10 kip load plus then 36 times ND and that has to all be equal to zero or in other words if we uh, divide through here put the 240 on the other side there's got to be some sort of nice convenient number to divide through how about by six which would give us that 5NA plus 6ND is going to be equal to, if I divide by 6, I'll get 24 divided by 6. That would be 4. 4 times 10 is 40 for the equilibrium equation. Of course, that's one equation, two unknowns, and we have to find another equation that will relate those two axial forces, NA for the aluminum rod force and ND for the steel force. And one way that we can do that is to look at our displacements and ultimately our continuity requirements. Those will tell us by this display shape up here by similar triangles that we know that delta A is to 30 as delta C is to 24 as delta D is to 36. There again, if we wanted to, we could find a common denominator here and simplify this a little bit, divide or factor out a 6 out of this, and you'll get delta A is to 5, as delta C is to 4, as delta D is to 6. Now, whether all of those are useful to us, we will find out in a moment. Along with this is that we can relate these displacements to deformations. So for instance, we know that the displacement at A is equal to the deformation in the aluminum. Notice that this upwards movement of delta A, it's indicating the positive sign convention for delta A, going up would put the aluminum rod into a squeezing or compressive situation. This axial force NA is shown exactly that. When the aluminum rod is being squeezed, it is pushing back against rod ABCD. That's what we've got shown. Consistency there. So there's no insertion of a minus sign here. Delta A, the displacement A, is exactly equal to the deformation of the aluminum rod. In a similar fashion, delta D is going to be equal to the deformation in the steel. So oh, by the way, that's what we're actually asked to calculate here is find the resulting displacement at D. This is key because this now gives us for the first time the glimmer of hope that we can actually come up with in the equation that we're going to need. And that is one that additional one that involves our unknown axial forces. So let's get the axial force displacement relationship in here and then it's all over but the shouting. Right? And we know that, for instance, the delta in the aluminum is equal to the axial force in the aluminum times the length of the aluminum over AE 
of the aluminum, likewise delta in the steel is equal to NL over AE of the steel. And from our compatibility uh, equations, our displacements and continuity equations, we have a relationship between delta A and delta D that delta A is going to be equal to 5 sixths of delta D. This says it should be smaller and by the similar triangles that's right it should be a ratio of 36 over 30 um, between the two that delta D is larger okay so 30 to 36 in terms of delta A and 30 over 36 would be 5 over 6. We're good with that particular uh, situation. So now we can substitute that in here and that will simplify um, our work in some ways because now we'll have delta of right use these here right that delta of the aluminum is NL over AE of the aluminum is equal to 5 sixths of NL over AE of the steel now it's time to start put uh, some numbers in here and start to, to grind through these calculations okay so we've got N of the aluminum is the same as N sub A. Okay, the length of the aluminum is 20 inches. Area of the aluminum is 1.2 square inches. And the modulus of elasticity is 10,600 KSI. That's equal to 5 6 of N of the steel, and that's the same thing as N sub D. The length of the steel is 15 inches and then we have the area of the steel at 0.3 square inches and the modulus of elasticity of 29,000 KSI. And because I ultimately am going to want to only really need to find delta D, that means finding N sub D, I'm going to find or solve this equation in terms of N sub A. That will turn out to be um, somewhat useful. So N A will equal all that stuff and all that stuff will be and then I'll do the right hand side stuff first. 5 times 15 divided by 6 divided by 0.3 divided by 29,000. Okay, times 10,600 times 1.2 divided by 20. And I get that NA is 0.9138 times ND. And that's something now that I can substitute back up into the equilibrium equation here. All right, so <clears throat> we're now just doing your math to find N D. That's what all of this is. Just a way to get there to our final answer. And so 5 times N A which is 0.9138 N D plus 6 and D is equal to 40. Okay, and when we do that then and solve for our axial force in, in, in the steel we get 3.785 kips Let's check our stress in the steel real quick to make sure we haven't violated linear elastic action. Boy, I sure hope not. Um, save that and then divide by 0.3 and that's 12.6 KSI. Good. Very good.
and when you also look at the axial force in the aluminum now that we have that of the steel we can calculate the axial stress in the aluminum both of those are in compression and so again there's a check there that those are both less than the respective yield stresses therefore our linear elastic model is okay and we can finally then calculate what our displacement at D is by noting that it's equal to the deformation in the steel and that then is NL over AE of the steel so 3.75 times 15 over the 0.3 square inches and over the 29,000 KSI that is Young's modulus and we get uh, as is typical for axially loaded systems a very small uh, net deformation and then co correspondingly finally a displacement of 0.065 inches going downwards.